in the capital, Kiev. Here's our international correspondent, Ola Garin. The rush to Kiev, a capital under attack. As we headed for the city this morning, there was little moving, apart from Ukrainian troops. But the Russians are watching from the skies, ready to strike, as they did here, just an hour outside the capital. Well, this is what we've come across on the road to Kiev. This convoy was obviously traveling to the city to be part of the defense of Kiev. This is an air defense missile system. It was hit yesterday. The smoke is still rising here. And here too, after an early morning strike on a block of flats near Kiev's Giuliani airport. The authorities here say it was a Russian missile strike that killed two people. It could have been many more, but plenty of locals had fled or taken cover in shelters. Yuri Shevchuk, who lives nearby, says the West must help Ukraine. I wanted to say uh, for you, for your governments, because that we are in need, urgently in need, as soon as possible, as much as possible. We are in need uh, anti-aircraft missiles, we are in need anti-tank missiles, we need ammunition. Is there any message that you would wish to send to President Putin? I wanted to say to President Putin that uh, only one way for him is way to hell. Well, this is what Kiev woke up to this morning. All of this destruction is in a residential area in a European city. And there is a real sense here now that nowhere in the capital is safe. And so much of Kiev now looks like this, still standing, but bracing for impact. Ukraine's embattled president, Volodymyr Zelensky, took to the deserted streets, shooting a selfie video to reassure his people. I am here, he said, and we will not lay down our arms. Far from it, we found Ukrainians taking up arms, forming volunteer brigades to defend the city alongside the local police. This volunteer, who goes by the nickname Moloy, said, I don't want to live in Russia, and my brothers-in-arms don't want that either. We will defend this city, or I will die. The volunteers are looking for Russian saboteurs, said to be already in the city. Nearby, we met Nino, out walking her dog and venting her fury. We demand an end to the war, she says. We can do it with sanctions. We must isolate the aggressor country. It terrorizes the whole world. With Russian forces at the gates, some are still fleeing the capital. For now, the city remains in Ukrainian hands, but the battle may be just beginning. Orla Giron, BBC News, Kyiv. Well, this evening, in a major shift in policy, Chancellor Olaf Scholz says Germany will deliver weapons to Ukraine. These are set to include 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger surface-to-air missiles. The government in Berlin has also indicated it could now back plans to cut Russia off from the swift international payment system. Our Europe editor, Katia Adler, joins us from Brussels. Katia, how significant are these announcements? Oh, it is really, really significant. I mean, we heard, we heard from the German Chancellor himself, he called this a watershed moment. You know, Germany traditionally, because of its role in the Second World War, has been very wary about getting involved in military conflict. Um, but this aggression by Russia on Ukraine has put the German government under 
real pressure at home um, and also abroad from other Western allies. So Germany will not only be sending weapons directly uh, to Ukraine itself, but it's also lifted some restrictions on German-made weapons owned by other countries. And so they can help Ukraine as well, like, for example, the Netherlands uh, or the Baltic states who have been waiting as well. And as you mentioned, I mean, Germany had been very opposed to rejecting uh, Russia from SWIFT. That's that global financial transaction network. But today, ministers said they were working on a way of how they could remove uh, Russia in a targeted way. And um, that, of course, is a move that is supported by the UK, the US and other member states as well. I think what we're seeing here is, you know, Germany, the EU as a whole, it's not exactly famed for very quick decision making. But what we're seeing right now in Ukraine is changing all of that. The EU right now uh, is working on its third sanction package in a week. Whichever country I call uh, prime ministers or the president in the case of France are talking all the time to other leaders in the EU, to the UK, to Joe Biden in the US as well. Tomorrow, EU foreign ministers meet and they'll talk about coordinating military action. And we're about to hear uh, from the EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen about action tonight. That will be any minute now. Katya, for the moment, thank you very much.